Hello there Pixel Pushers, it's Sadiq Hussain here again with another Affinity Photo tutorial and this time as you can see we've got an old photograph here and uh, we're going to do a restoration so if we go back to, if I disable that layer, it's already done and that's what the photograph started like and we're going to be using Affinity Photos tools um, all, the, all the main tools basically uh, repairing, um, colorizing cropping, creating a border, creating an adjustment layer for contrast and brightness and uh, and then upscaling so that we get a high resolution file ready for printing or ready for downscaling again for use on the electronic media like um, social media, uh, the internet and emailing of course um, but for mainly for, for getting a large print so that's what we started with now incidentally just to uh, remind everybody what i tend to do uh, these days is that just download the microsoft office lens app it's a free app for your mobile phone works on a tablet as well but it's better on a mobile phone because most mobile phones rear facing cameras are really high quality and then you, you essentially photograph your photograph your print uh, from uh, on a table using the MS Office lens and the reason why it's better to use that app rather than the phone app on your mobile phone is that it automatically corrects the perspective, corrects the lighting, crops it ready for saving onto your phone and once you've got that file of an old photograph like this particular one you can see it's sort of dog-eared and um, it needs some work on it and in fact I have already cropped the border a little bit but we can do a bit more cropping if necessary um, is then that digital file can be worked on now it is low resolution a because the original photograph was very small on it sort of wallet sized um, but also uh, because it's not a high quality scan but that doesn't matter because you're going to be repaired anyway and we're going to upscale it using the uh, increased um, document size option within Affinity Photo okay so let's go then and like I said I've already done it so that's the way it started and that's where we'll finish as you can see it's a pretty good repair work and in total that's around about two hours work it's not something you can do in 10 minutes or 20 minutes it's 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 a good two hours work it's not going to take that long today because I'm clearly not going to go through every single step um, individually but you can also convert it to a sepia tone in fact this picture started off as a sepia tone I then converted it to black and white before I added in the color so you can save it as that or you can save it as that um, and then you've got the best of both worlds but in fact it started off like that and all these separate layers here let me just bring that layers palette out and show you all these separate layers are all the different edits and if I show you basically what I've done and I'm going to recreate all of that um, um, slowly um, and then add to it is that um, that's the original photo there which is what we can see here and that's with all the blemishes repaired so you can see here all the blemishes have gone so that's on a separate layer and I'll show you how to do that with the in painting tool mainly so that's where it started as let me just move that over here and move it back to where it should be actually um, so that's the blemishes removed you can see that that's the background and some of the clothing it's better to keep certain areas of the image like clothing background hair and then face separately so that if you do make a mistake you can just delete that one layer and then start again rather than starting from scratch completely um, and then i did a levels adjustment basically to give boost the contrast on it and then I started to add some color to part of the image using the, the color adjustment layer. The, the one blouse, the other blouse, and then the background. And of course you don't have to do it in this order. Then the face. Now the face, the skin tones has got to be very subtle. It is a very subtle shade of pink. Um, and then uh, as I added lipstick. And then 
the hair I actually did a little bit of a color on the hair and then the brooch sort of a gold brooch or a brass brooch uh, and then like I said the hair uh, and then I added uh, a border to it um, and then I did another recolor adjustment to give it a sepia tone uh, and then obviously put a border on that one and then save that one so there's multiple layers there so I'm just going to disable all these layers go back to the beginning and then just talk you through what the process is obviously I'm not going to go through every single blemish removal now because that would take two hours like I said so you don't need to do that the first thing I did was I it started off as a sepia image I took out the um, the color by converting by using an adjustment layer for black and white so one of the first things you would do and uh, this one's already done actually but um, if you had color in it or if it was a color photograph in the first place you go to adjustments um, and then under black and white here convert it to black and white it's already black and white make sure you you adjust the sliders to get the best possible black and white conversion and then you would have a black and white conversion layer there and then the image would essentially start off as black and white okay and then you'd be looking at the blemishes all these now the way to remove these blemishes and i'll demonstrate to you and then we'll just enable what we've already done so it's like I said, always a good idea to create a new pixel layer here at the point where you're going to be making some blemish removals and use the in-painting tool here. Now this in-painting tool is buried within these five tools and they're all blemish removal or patch repair or uh, repair tools. And really it's this in-painting tool which looks like a brush that's the key and it really works well and really what you're doing is you're changing the size of the brush so it's a little bit bigger than the blemish and you just paint over it okay now when it doesn't work like that i just did that and nothing's happened is because i've created a new pixel layer i must say at the top here it must be current layer and below that means that it's the it's the layer below where the image is that actually it's going to make the change but it's going to put the changes on this new additional layer so it's like a, a transparency sitting on top with the adjustments on so that this time should work there we go if it doesn't work first time we just add to it okay now the flow up here is 55 that means the effectiveness of the brush uh, needs to be upped a little bit and and that'll do work fine there we go and then wherever there's a blemish just paint with it and move around the image by using the the um, space bar and slowly and it's a, it is a methodical um, take out not all blemishes but most of them because if you take out all of them it might look a little bit fake a little bit plasticky a little bit um, waxy and that won't um, help to sell it at all always zoom out zoom in to have a look at your handy and if it did a mistake like that just undo from there okay and then when you get to a an area like that where there's a quite a big um blemish then you need to be a little bit careful and just do a little bit at a time and if it works like that one fine go on to the next one if it doesn't undo it and try it again like that that works fine and you would literally just go through and use this tool to repair a small section at a time now the background is always a good place to start because normally a the background is not so critical but also it tends to be easier to do and easier to sell that repair compared to the face the clothing but of course at some point you will need to come to do that uh, the clothing down here but where there's a repair work like at the top there yeah so if the in painting tool works great 
and sometimes you might need to increase the size of the in painting tool just so you, you paint over a bigger area and it does a sample like there and it works quite well okay so that's all working fine and you just basically go through don't worry about a little bit of pattern random pattern that emerges that actually adds to the background it's not something you want on the face but in clothing or in textured clothing or in the background it's perfectly okay so you would literally go through and do all of that okay let me just show you that on the clothing it can be a bit tricky so you have to be careful where you've got marks like these okay now these are just marks on the print but it'll still work quite well what i would advise is create a new pixel layer and then give that a name clothing give this a name background uh, and you would literally do a set uh, an area at a time okay so when it's on clothing and backgrounds it's easier not uh, infallible but easier but when you're on the face that can be tricky okay so you do want to remove all these blemishes blemishes here and always zoom in if you need to like that reduce or increase the size of the brush according to the blemish that you're removing and literally methodically go through all of that okay so i'm just going to disable that and put back the blemishes that are removed they put back the uh, layer where I, I used to remove the blemishes so i've done the whole picture as before did earlier with all the blemishes removed including on the face as well but on the face you do need to be careful particularly around the eye particularly around the um the forehead where we had blemishes uh, in fact uh, if we look here there was a big crease along here you know do the hair first do that blemish do that forehead and do this bit about the eye last once you've got a bit of experience okay so well done and that's that done okay so once you've done the blemishes okay i've instigate those again do a levels adjustment so you just go to adjustment and instead of black and white either brightness and contrast all levels or curves and either one of those will allow you to if you do curves you can adjust the contrast like that okay now these blotches that you've seen is because it's actually um picking up the um uh the the original image and the blemishes so you need to be careful about that okay so levels adjustment let's put that back on so that's what i did earlier a levels adjustment and then to colorize if i did put this back on on the uh, girl's blouse it's really simple as create a new layer okay put that layer in the right place move that layer up so i'm going to position it just below that layer that we have created just to replicate it and what you do is you select brush paint brush go to color and pick a color okay i did it red before let's give it a sort of a lime green aquamarine colored top there and obviously you can tweak it here so what color you want to have it and once you're happy with the color what you need to do is change the blend mode here to right the way down where it says color because that way all of the contrast the dark pixels the shadows will all come out so it won't be a solid color on top it will actually contour with the um, nuances of the fabric or the face or the background okay so now we just want to choose the right brush so pick a just a regular soft edged brush in the basic brushes palette and make the brush an appropriate size let's say there make sure that blender mode is color 
and then don't worry about how intense the color is at this stage just paint with the onto the area and obviously do the broad bulk of it first which is where the bulk of the dress is i'll just do this blouse and you just repeat that exercise with the other clothing or the other elements that i've already talked about so you do it quickly in the middle and then you zoom in and reduce the size of the brush and then obviously just paint right to the edge take your time don't rush it like me now because i'm trying to keep it within a certain time frame so you just take your time particularly around the edges now if you do make make a mistake like if i did that there yes you could undo that step there but what would be a good idea is that when you create that original blank layer add a mask to it if i click on add mask that mask then allows me that if i do make a mistake I'll make sure I've got that layer selected that if I do make a mistake so let me just paint this first let's say I went like that and I made that mistake yes I could undo it but in fact because I've got a mask if I just select the mask and then paint with black then it's just like any other mask painting with black blocks that effect and and essentially raises out back to where it was because you're painting a mask over the top of the mistake just be careful that you've got the mask layer selected rather than the um the area that you're painting okay so obviously i've got to go back to that other color uh, which was down here in fact i'm going to sample this color here and then paint with that there we go okay so i'm just going to use reduce the size because there's a little bit of a collar there of the dress and then zoom out and then zoom in so this constantly zooming in zooming out is cr absolutely critical because not only do you want to get as close to the inside so sorry so close to the um the pixels as possible you do equally want to zoom out to see what's the uh, what's your handiwork look like and you can only really see that looking at a, a bird's eye view by zooming out zooming in okay and you essentially just go through do all of it and once you've done it all and you know increase the size of the brush to do large areas so i use the keyboard shortcut of the square bracket keys just next to the um, return key to change the size of the brush and once you've gone through and fine-tuned it and done everything you might say well actually i quite like that color green that suits it but you might say it's a bit too strong the color you've already changed the blend mode and that's good but now you can change the opacity of that layer so if we just bring that opacity down say 50 percent it just makes it more of a subtle a more of a subtle color okay let me just do this bit here and of course you can change that at any time you can bring it very pale or you can bring it up a little bit so that's to suit you that's about right normally about 50 percent is good um it's realistic colors then you go and do the other colors so i'm just going to disable that layer and then enable the original layer that i did okay you can see that's why i kept these layers just so i could essentially show you each step fairly quickly and then you do the next one the next blouse and so on and so forth and for each layer create a mask by clicking down here so you've got it there if you need to use it although you don't have to obviously if it's not needed that's the background and you know choose a, a color that's appropriate to the scene the era 
the type of photograph that it was so you're not making it look something that it isn't um and i think that's it except we just need to add a border okay so you do the final um edit and then once you've done the final edit to create the border as you know from other videos you go to effects the effects tab go to outline bring it across change the color of the outline to whatever you want in this case we want white uh, the border make sure the border is selected to inside of the canvas and of course you would just change the size of that now i've already got a border that's why you're not seeing any effect okay but that's what you would do just like we've done before um, and then if you wanted to do obviously a color version then we just disable that um the uh, sepia tone version and we've got um, that option there now to do the sepia tone you do a, a a recolor adjustment so if you open up that it's it, it's in the adjustments panel it's called recolor and then you can change the color of the whole image as you see fit and if you wanted to give it a warm tone a blue tone you could do that and um, uh, and then that particular color will apply to to that image you know you could create give it a sepia or a blue tinge whatever it is so you could do that okay so that's pretty much it i know i've rushed through it but really the bit that takes you will take you nearly an hour is this uh, blemish removal and you're re effectively using this um, uh, in painting tool you can use the blemish removal tool because there you can use the option key on your keyboard or sorry the alt key on a windows keyboard when you press that it allows you to sample from a particular area and then paint and repair in another area when the blemish removal tool sorry the in painting tool doesn't work then the blemish removal tool uh, tends to work so you try the different tools wherever possible okay and then of course to upscale it you go to document and then resize document you do this right at the end because what it does it then helps to smooth out those edits that you've done you're adding more pixels in intelligently using the software to sample pixels and then create new ones and insert them in and whatever the uh, image was always make sure that you are upscaling it to 300 dpi because that's optimum for photographs for printing purposes make sure resample is checked um, ticked so that it does upscale and add more pixels and then whatever the number is here on size i would at least triple it possibly even four times it there so this started off at there's about three thousand pixels and i changed it to six thousand so i doubled it but i'd go even further and let's make that ten thousand now that is a bit overkill that means that that is now going to be ten thousand by seven thousand pixels at 300 dpi so it's going to add more pixels in there you won't see any difference on the screen but if you look at it's just done that now if you look at if you click on the hand you can see now it's saying the image is 10,000 pixels by 7,000 and that's 71 megabyte jpeg when you save it so that's a big file clearly you don't need to have it that big but if you're going to print a large a3 version of it you do need to have that large file size uh, to get the resolution and now of course if we zoom right in you know the pixels won't show until when you're well into it and by the time you get to this stage when you can see the pixels you're so far in that you can't even make out which part of the image you're on so having more pixels does have an effect and if you really zoom down to the eye there's no way you can tell that you've added more um extrapolated and let the software add more pixels okay so that's the sepia uh, option and um, that's the color option
okay so do have a go do give us some feedback and a like if you think that's useful uh, and of course um, uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so thank you for watching and um, i'll see you next time <music>